many terrorists would sooner describe themselves as freedom fighters. Could it be that the charge of terrorism could just as easily be made against Western corporations, speculators and policy makers? Uh, well, when we talk about terrorism, it means what they do to us, not what we do to them. And what they do to us can be pretty ugly, although it's, it's not even a fraction of what we do to them. I mean, take, say, 9-11. That was a pretty serious act of terrorism, maybe the worst single act of terrorism in history. But it could have been worse. I mean, suppose, for example, that Al-Qaeda had uh, bombed Washington, uh, bombed the White House. It killed the president, installed a harsh military dictatorship, uh, brought in a bunch of economists who uh, drove the economy into its worst disaster in history. Well, that would have been worse than 9-11. And I'm not making it up. It happened. What's called the first 9-11 in South America, namely in Chile. On the 11th of September, 1973, the democratically elected Chilean president, Salvador Allende, was overthrown in a coup. A dictatorship under Augusto Pinochet was established that ruled Chile until 1990. There was the systematic suppression of all political dissidents. Thousands were imprisoned and murdered. Who was involved in that first 9-11? Uh, it's not hard to find them. Uh, right in uh, Washington and London and so on. But that's off the agenda. It doesn't count. There's a principle of ideology that we must never look at our own crimes. We should, on the other hand, uh, exult in the crimes of others and in our own nobility in opposing them. The root causes of so-called terrorism will not be solved by increasing economic inequality. If governments really are serious